thing most people don't know is I make my own hot sauces with some of the hottest peppers in the world, ghost peppers, Trinidad scorpion peppers that would burn most people's tongues off, but I love to combine it with <laughs> chipotle peppers and uh, peach jam and strawberries. So I get some of the heat and some of the sweetness. And um, most people cannot handle the hottest stuff that I create. So there's something most people don't know about what I do as a hobby. Now, where do you source these or are you not allowed to say? We can buy the peppers just about anywhere we want in some of these specialty stores here. And um, the name that my kids and I actually gave our sauces is called Tears of Joy. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, we're thinking about commercializing it somewhere down the road, but not right now. Oh, I love it. Well, Fire Nation, if you're recognizing John's voice, it's because he joined us on episode 281, on episode 1523. And now, John, you're joining us on episode 2103. Wow. So. Welcome wow. back for the trifecta, brother. We've been going strong since 2012. You've been with us along this journey. And today's audio masterclass that you are essentially going to be dropping value bombs on is the new science to unlock your brain's hidden power. So John, just give us a couple quick teasers on a few things we're going to be chatting about today before we dive on in. Love it. So I'll use a big word called neuroplasticity. Whoa. And simply put, uh, it's one of the greatest discoveries in the last hundred years about our brain. And simply put, neuroplasticity says that we are not hardwired like we thought many years ago, but our brain is creating new patterns like beliefs, new perspectives, new habits every moment of every day. Either new ones are being created or we are reinforcing old ones. And this is where the opportunity is and also where the problems lie when it comes to most people who want to achieve greater success. Well, you have always loved big words like that. So I'm going to use another one right now, innersizing. What is <laughs> innersizing and how the heck does it work? All right. So back in the um, uh, 50s and 60s and even in the 70s, a guy by the name of Jack LaLanne who actually came up with exercising. And basically he said, if you eat right and you exercise your body and your organs, you strengthen them. Well, innersizing is based on all of my research in the last 15 years around our brain and our ability to actually strengthen our neuro muscles. And that's why I wrote my book called Inner Size, was because there are ways to strengthen key parts of your brain where we are more in control and we can achieve more of our goals and dreams faster and easier than ever before. And so it is a new revolution that I've kicked off with hundreds of thousands of people that inner size every day uh, to strengthen their key core emotional, mental um, neuro muscles. Now, we as entrepreneurs, as human beings, we sabotage ourselves all the time. And you believe that self-esteem is a major reason for this. Talk about that. Sure. So we actually don't sabotage ourselves. Our brain sabotages us. Let me explain. Um, nobody wants to self-sabotage, you know, whether it's, you know, losing weight, whether it's making more money, whether it's growing their business, whether it's having a great relationship. However, what we've discovered in the last number of years is we have set points. So, for example, let's say in the last three to five years, you weigh a certain amount. Any time you deviate, either you gain weight more than your current set point is, or you lose weight more than your current set point is, your brain will self-regulate and adjust until you meet the average of the last, let's say, three years. The exact same thing happens when you earn more money than you're used to earning, or you earn less money than you're used to earning. This self-regulating part of the brain adjusts thoughts, emotions, and behaviors until we reach that set point that we have become accustomed to. And what most people don't understand is all of this self-sabotaging is the brain's way of just keeping you in this comfort and safety zone that it perceives is the best thing for you. And this is part of the subconscious brain versus the conscious decision-making, desiring part of our brain. And so the newest research 
is that there are three key elements that causes self-sabotage and self-esteem is one of them. So if you feel at a subconscious level that you really don't deserve the success that you consciously want, you will self-sabotage in the form of disempowering thoughts, in the form of procrastination, and if you achieve more success than you are believing at a subconscious level that you deserve, you will actually self-sabotage through your behaviors and not take the actions that are required in order to maintain or exceed the goals that you have. Fire Nation, I hope you're absorbing these words from John because these are situations that we find ourselves in. And another situation is getting stuck in a rut. I mean, we can just get stuck in ruts and it's so hard to get out of that rut. I mean, just picture that old wagon wheel back in the day on that dirt road. It's just stuck in that rut. I mean, it literally is not easy to get unstuck once you get stuck in that rut. But that's one thing that you really thrive in, John. You help people get out of these ruts, get unstuck in life. Break that down for us. Whenever I hear something like, you know, I'm stuck, you know, the question is, being stuck is an effect, right? It's, it's an end result of something that's happened in the past. So the question is, what is causing the stuck state? So is the stuck state a result of how you're thinking about it? So if, you're, if you keep focusing on, you know, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, your brain goes, okay, 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 and it keeps you in that stuck state. And it also activates the emotions of a stuck state, which then trigger the behaviors of a stuck state. Now, what if we shifted our brain to say, okay, I'm stuck right now. What needs to happen in order for me to get unstuck? What would I have to be thinking to get unstuck? What would I have to be feeling to get unstuck? And then what behaviors, small ones, not big ones, I'll explain why in a moment, could I take to get unstuck? And maybe I'll share something with you that uh, happened. You just triggered a thought for me. Many, many years ago, uh, probably about uh, almost 40 years ago, when I got into real estate as a commission-only salesperson, my first mentor, Mr. Alan Brown, uh, came into the office one day and he says, what are you doing? I said, ah, you know, I'm in a bit of a slump. You know, I haven't made any, any sales for the last couple of weeks and, you know, things just aren't working the way I want to. And so he says, you know what, come with me. So I, I got my coat on, my boots on. We went into uh, his car and he drove me in the middle of winter. He drove me about a mile away from the office. And I said, well, you know, what are we doing here? And he says, please get out. And I said, what do you mean, Mr. Brown? Are you firing me? He says, no, no, please get out. I said, okay. So I got out. He rolled down the window uh, and he says, great. Now knock doors all the way back to the office and use the script that I gave you. Hi, this is John Astraff, and we have somebody who's looking to buy a home in the neighborhood, et cetera. And I said, you're not serious, sir. He says, of course I'm serious. I said, the only way to get out of a slump is to do the activities that will yield leads and sales. So needless to say, he left me, and about three hours later, I ended up back at the office with several leads, of which we ended up closing on a listing, which we ended up selling later, and I made about $1,500. And so his guidance to me was stop focusing on your slump, fo stop focusing on the rut, get out there and take the action that's required to achieve the results you want. And being a commission-only salesperson, there's only two things that, that really make a difference, right? Generating leads and closing, you know, closing leads and prospects. And so when we are in a stuck state, what we're doing is repeating a neural and emotional pattern that is stopping us from taking the action we need. And that is something that we can change. Getting out of a rut is difficult, but also changing is tough for a lot of people. It's critical, but it's tough for a lot of us and it's tough for a lot of entrepreneurs. Now, what I do love is you say that there are four things that are blocking us as humans from change. Break those down for us. When we think of the word change, the only human being that likes change is a wet baby. The rest, <laughs> the rest of us humans, um, we resist change, not because we don't want to grow. It's because when the brain is, um, is experiencing change, it has mechanisms, just like a thermostat, you know, keeps the room temperature at whatever is programmed in the, in the thermostat. 
when you understand the hierarchy of how the brain works, number one is safety, right? So what kind of safety? And number one is for our life. So if there's something that requires you know, us to be safe from dying, then that is the highest priority for the brain. That's number one. But number two right there with that is any potential or real danger. So if there's a potential that I'm going to lose money, the motivational circuit in the brain actually deactivates. The thinking part of the brain, the left prefrontal cortex, what I call is the Einstein part of the brain deactivates, which is the CEO of the brain. And the fear center and stress center in the brain is activated, which means we're either going to run away, we're going to fight, we're going to faint. Okay, so it's fight or flight response system. So change is not hard but change is uncomfortable and the brain perceives change as uncomfortable and it will prevent behavior unless you know how to override the, that system. And so the four things that actually activate that fear response or stress response is number one, self-image, self-esteem. If there is a challenge to my self-worth, my self-esteem or um, uh, how I perceive myself in the world and what I deserve, then I'm not going to want to do what is required to change. That's number one. Number two is limiting beliefs. So what kind of limited beliefs? If you have a goal to build your business, but in the recesses of your brain, you believe that you're either too young, too old, too Asian, too Caucasian, um, not smart enough, not good enough, not skilled enough, then these limiting beliefs are actually going to put the brakes on any of the behavior that you need to take. Uh, that's two. Number three is going to be fears. Now, this is a huge one for entrepreneurs. When we say fear, what kind of fear? Well, remember what I talked about safety first in the brain's way of operating? Well, fear of failure. Fear of failure could bring with it um, loss of money. Fear of failure could cause me to be embarrassed, ashamed, ridiculed, or even judged. Fear of disappointment. What if I try my best and I fail and now I'm affecting my self-image of myself, which is already worried about am I good enough or smart enough? What if I disappoint my wife, my children, my boss? So those three are the core ones. And then the other one is when we feel like we don't have the knowledge or the skill to achieve the goal that we want, we actually will deactivate the motivational center of our brain for safety. And we prefer to master disappointment than we do to master anything else that involves change. Does that make sense so far? Makes a lot of sense in Fire Nation. These are things that are blocking us from change and these are things that need to be unblocked. And another area, John, that you just really talk about in depth and with a lot of skill in is motivation because we as humans, like we know what's good for us, yet we don't always do those things. So why do we not do the right things even though we know they're the right things? How do we find the motivation to start doing those things and stick with it? Whenever we're looking at achieving goals, there's several different parts of the brain that when you get these activated, um, you'll actually have more motivation. Where most entrepreneurs fail themselves um, is not understanding how their brain works. And as I mentioned, the reason I'm excited about this, the reason I wrote Inner Size is, is this is kind of like the user's manual for the brain and for entrepreneurs. So when we set a goal uh, and we use our imagination, a part of our brain, we use our CEO and the deductive reasoning of I want this, not that, that's activating one part of the brain. Perfect. The next part is activating the emotional center of the brain. And so when I ask entrepreneurs, like, why do you want to achieve that goal? Most of them give me these superficial, fluffy reasons why. And when I ask them, well, why is that important? And why is that important? And why is that important? What you try to get to when you're coming up with your why is, what is the biggest reason why you must do this? that if you don't, will create more pain for you than if you fail. Now, why do we have to go that deep? And the reason is because the automatic processes in our brain, if they perceive any types of pain, it our brain will compare this pain versus that pain, 
in lightning speeds. And so if there's a pain of failure, that's one thing. But if that's compared against the pain of my children seeing me not doing my best and me teaching them that, you know, it's okay not to go after your goals, that's a bigger pain for, let's say, most fathers or mothers. And so why must I do this? is really, really critical to get the emotional aspect of the brain engaged to override that fear circuit or that embarrassment circuit, et cetera. The third part, and this one is where we get the trifecta going. So now I've got the, what is the goal I want to achieve? Now I've activated the emotional centers of my brain with my big why, and I go as deep as I can. And then the third part is Just give me the first three steps. What are the three steps that are easy to do that I'm committed to doing? Now, why three easy steps? Because when we over or overwhelm our brain with all of the different things I need to learn and things to do and the planning, we actually trigger that stress response center, which deactivates motivation. But if I say to myself, okay, here's what I want. Here's the reason why I must achieve it. And here are three little things that I could do either today or this week. We actually lower the firing threshold of the fear and stress response center. And our brain says, okay, you can do that because those are easy for you to do. And now we are in action. And now we are building our neuro muscle of confidence. Now we're building our neuro muscle of certainty. Now we're building our neuro muscle of I'm an action taker as opposed to I have goals and dreams and I procrastinate and I don't take them. So we reduce it to the ridiculous so that we engage several different parts of the brain, including the fourth one now is the motor cortex. And so if you think about your brain, you know, as having a variety of different, you know, band members, right? So if you were in a band, you'd have somebody playing the piano, somebody playing the guitar, somebody playing the, you know, trumpet or whatever the case is and guitar, et cetera. Um, Our brain actually has different parts of it that are responsible for different things. And we engage more of our brain to work in harmony than we eliminate the chaos that causes us to procrastinate and not take action. Fire Nation, what is the goal? What is the why? What are those first three steps? Now you can officially be in action and then that motor cortex, reduce to the ridiculous. I love that phrase. In Fire Nation, yep. more value bombs are coming as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsor. Summer is here, and if you're like me, then you're freeing up time to do things like hang by the pool, enjoy family, and kick back with a book for some R&R. The last thing I want to be doing, sifting through tons of unqualified candidates' resumes. That's why you need ZipRecruiter to find great candidates. They do the work for you, and now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. How do they do it? First, ZipRecruiter uses its powerful technology to find and match the right candidates up with your job. Then you can easily review view these recommended candidates and invite your top choices to apply. In fact, four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. It's no wonder ZipRecruiter is the number one rated hiring site based on G2 satisfaction ratings as of January 1st, 2022. So soak up all that summer has to offer and let ZipRecruiter do the work. Ready for the URL? It's ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. That's where you can try it for free. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash F-I-R-E. Zip Recruiter, the smartest way to hire. Roll by ADP is the first chat-based mobile payroll app designed for small businesses and startups. It makes doing payroll ridiculously easy. How easy? Put it this way. It's as easy as pulling up a podcast on your phone. Roll takes on payroll tasks for you, like automatically filing your payroll taxes. As a small business owner, you're expected to do it all, but now you don't have to. You're a small business owner, not an accountant. So if you have a payroll question, just fire off a text to receive Roll's 24-7 live support and step-by-step guidance. Roll knows there are only so many minutes in the day, and that's why it's designed for maximum efficiency, run payroll in under a minute, and use your newfound free time to catch up on some much-needed you time. You already have enough to worry about, so you can rest easy knowing Roll is backed by ADP, giving you industry-leading security, expertise, and reliability. Visit getroll.com slash fire to get the Roll by ADP app and get your first three months free. That's getroll.com slash fire. 
Customization and scalability might seem like things you don't need to worry about in the beginning, but I'm here to tell you that if you can integrate these things into your business software from the beginning, you'll save yourself loads of time in the long run. And with a HubSpot CRM, you get access to both from the very start. Let's take your website as an example. Customization helps you stand out from the crowd, and with HubSpot's web builder, you can create a unique website for your business in just a few easy steps. Select a theme yourself from the HubSpot marketplace or let developers build your unique theme from scratch. With its easy to use editor, you'll be able to seamlessly make updates and take full ownership of your site. And scalability helps you adapt to growth and changes quickly. As an example, maybe you're experiencing a big growth spurt with your team. With HubSpot's scalable security, you can ensure your team of 200 can work just as efficiently as a team of 20. Learn how your business can grow better at HubSpot.com. So John, we're back and almost every human being on this planet struggles on some level with weight loss or financial troubles or relationship troubles or some combo of the three. Talk to us about how inner sizing can help people make the shift they need to create a better overall life. Going back to what we talked about earlier, we all develop these thermostat-like set points. And those set points are a result of the knowledge we have, the skills we have, the beliefs we have, but more importantly, it's part of the habitual way we have developed ourselves. There's something called the automatic self. And uh, in another big term, there's there's a, a network like series of circuits in the brain that make up something called the default mode network. So the default mode network is just the way that I'm always going to default to. And the default mode network defaults to your habits. So if you think about what habits were you born with, and the answer is none. You didn't have any beliefs. You didn't have any perspective on the world. You didn't have any habits. You developed these habits. Now, what are habits made up of? Habits are made up of our thoughts, our emotions, our experiences, our behaviors that produce these results. And over time, these habits formulate a part of the brain called the striatum, which is the default mode network of our being. And so when we get stuck you know, in a relationship, when we get stuck financially, we have challenges, most people are repeating patterns over and over and over again, and they're not even aware that this isn't the first time they've had a financial challenge. This isn't the first time they've had a relationship challenge. This isn't the first time they've lost weight and gained it all back. And so the question is, how do we reset the habitual patterns in the brain, the stuff that works 95 to 98% automatically without our even knowing it day in and day out? And the answer is by creating a new pattern that we have to reinforce, new thought patterns, new emotional patterns, new belief patterns, uh, new uh, ways of managing our emotions, and that means we have to intersize some new neuro muscles. Now, here is the, the 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 thing that everyone wants to pay very very close attention to. We used to believe the neuroscience and neuroscience uh, neuropsychology community believe that it took about 21 days to develop this new thought, emotional, or behavioral pattern. We'll take that number and throw it out the window and forget it for the rest of your life. Because all of the latest research that's come out just in the last 12 months says it takes between 66 days and 365 days of repeating a pattern for it to go from us consciously using our effort to it becoming a subconscious new pattern that overrides the old one. I hope I make that really, really clear. Not 21, not 35, not 45. Between 66 and 365 days to develop a new pattern that goes from your conscious effort, you know, having to think about doing it to a subconscious pattern that actually works without you thinking. Fire Nation, these are the type of value bombs that I want you to be absorbing from John as we're kind of going through this inner sizing process. And John, what I want to do right now is get specific because you've used inner size techniques to lose weight, to build strength. This is you. How have you done it? I love it. Okay. So um, let's, let's take me as an example with, um, you know, building my companies. Uh, many, many years ago, 
uh, I set a goal to build uh, Remax of Indiana, which I was the CEO of and founder of. And my first goal when I was 26 years old was to hit a billion dollars uh, in sales. Uh, everybody thought I was freaking crazy, but I had used something called cognitive priming uh, every single day for seven years previously. And I'll explain cognitive priming. So I set the goal of a billion dollars in sales. I had no idea how to achieve it. I didn't have the money to hire people. I didn't have anything other than me. I bought the franchising rights for Remax for the state of Indiana. And every day, I would read my vision and I would read it like this. I'm so happy and grateful that Remax of Indiana is now a billion dollar a year in sales company. All of the tools and resources and people that I need in order to make this happen and a reality is coming into play right now. So that was one vision that I would read every single day. Next, I would read, and by the way, I would read it, I would emotionalize it, I would record it, so that I would have the repetition every single day in my ears. Uh, I'm so happy and grateful for the fact that I have all the knowledge, intelligence, um, and resources required to achieve my goal. Uh, I created these affirmations for myself. I then would uh, put my fingers on my laminated document with all of this written down. And as I was running my fingers across it, I knew that I was sending a signal from my fingers to my brain. Now, I did all of this as a part of something called cognitive priming, as I just mentioned. And then I would close my eyes. I would activate the occipital lobe when I would visualize this being real. And then I also learned how to manage the little voice in my head that said, that's bullshit. You don't have the knowledge. You don't have the skills. You don't have the tools, the resources, the people, or the money to make this happen. And I used this simple word every time I heard the little inner critic in my head. I just go, next. Now, I knew that my old self-image, I knew that my old beliefs, my old fears would rear their ugly head in the form of a little critic inside my head. Those are my old neurons trying to keep me stuck. Remember the thermostat analogy I used? This is the way our brain tries to keep us stuck through these self-talk, these self-deprecating uh, language patterns in our own brain. But I was uh, uh, I learned enough at that point to go just next, and then I would repeat the affirmation, repeat the, um, repeat the uh, emotion, and then I would say, what do I need to do today to make this a reality? And needless to say, 1987, when I started this, uh, it wasn't a reality. I was a one-man person in an office, an executive office suite. And in 1992, my company hit 1.2 billion dollars in sales. I had built one of the fastest growing Remax real estate companies in the world. And then I knew we were stuck because we had about seven, 800 agents and we got stuck at $1.2 billion for a couple of years. And I said, okay, why are we stuck? I know there is so much more room for growth here. And so at one of our annual conferences, I asked my uh, group of real estate agents, I think I had about 700, 750 at that time. I said, how many of you want to double or triple your income in the next 12 months? And everybody's hand went up. I said, great. For those of you who want to come and I'll, I'm going to call it now inner size with me for the next six months, I'll show you how to reprogram your subconscious mind so it goes to work for you instead of against you. And 75 people um, raised their hands and they agreed to pay $3,000 so I could put the infrastructure in place for them uh, to be able to be accountable every day to a series of inner sizes that took about 20 minutes a day to do. And in the first six months, those 75 people, forget about the other 700, but those 75 people increased my sales above and beyond what they did the year before by $100 million. And so then, as you can imagine, the following year, I took it to every single agent. And over the next four years, my company went from $1.2 billion to $4.5 billion. I didn't teach them one new skill about selling homes or marketing homes or getting listings. Zero. All I taught them was how to get their conscious and their subconscious mind aligned through inner sizing every single day. And that was 
you know, as you can imagine, that was 1987, 1992, uh, 1995. Um, and now the, the, the technology and the methodology is so much better. That's why I'm so excited about this. And that's really why I wrote Intersize is to really get people to understand that the power is within you. And if you learn how to use your brain better based on the latest brain science, um, you will be able to achieve goals that you can only dream of now. With all that being said, John, we're entrepreneurs. We feel fear. We feel fear of failure, fear of success. I mean, you name it, we're going to fear it on some levels. So now that you've said that fear can be transformed into a fuel for success, let's talk about that. How is that possible? Well, first you have to understand fear, and most people don't understand this, fear is one of your six core subconscious emotions. So let's go back to understanding our brains better. If safety is the number one priority for the brain, right, survival first, then safety for my emotions, finances, family, mental um, uh, being, etc., then anything that the brain your brain perceives as being real or potential danger is going to activate a part of the brain called the amygdala, the emotional center of the brain, and it's going to fire off either cortisol, epinephrine, or adrenaline, norepinephrine. And why do we do that? Well, if you think about when we were still in caves and saber-toothed tigers were trying to eat us, we would have to have this fear center so highly attuned for our lives, safety, and our families, and our children, and our tribe. And so this is one of the most highly developed parts of our brains is this amygdala. Uh, there's two of them on, on each side of our brain, just above our ears. And any time that we have one of the 50 core fears, fear of failure, fear of success and failing, fear of being dis uh, uh, disappointed, embarrassed, ashamed, ridiculed, judged, killed, this neurochemical release in the brain has got, uh, got us on high alert. And what are we going to do? Well, we're either going to have to fight, which is rare these days. We're going to have to freeze, which is what happens to most entrepreneurs. We're going to have to run away, which is what happens to most entrepreneurs. And then one of the things that happens to some people is they'll actually faint when this neurochemical release is happening in their body. Now, what if I told you that in less than 90 seconds, you can actually deactivate your fear response center in your brain. And here's how to do it. In the book, I talk about inner size number one. So when you are afraid of failing, you're afraid of being embarrassed, ashamed, ridiculed, judged, whatever. If you just stopped and you took six deep breaths in through your nose and then out through your mouth like you're blowing out through a straw, now, the reason for that is because it changes your focus and it causes you to focus on breathing out through a straw. Six to 10 deep breaths in five seconds, out five seconds, in five seconds, out five seconds. That is enough to deactivate the fear center in the brain. And what happens when the fear center in the brain is activated for any one of the 50 fears, the logical, rational thinking brain, all the blood flow moves away from that, um, all the, uh, away from that left prefrontal cortex and into the fear center of the brain so you can have all the energy you need to take off and run away if you need to or fight the saber-toothed tiger. So if you did inner size number one to calm the circuits first, so you're out of a reactive state and you shift into what we call is a relaxed and responsive state. Now what I call is the Einstein brain lights back up very, very quickly. And then you move to inner size number two, and it's called AIA, A-I-A. -A. The first A is for awareness. So awareness of what? Well, it's awareness of what were my thoughts just then? What are my feelings? What are my sensations? What, what's happening in my body? What is my behavior right now? Is it one that's going to move me towards my goals and dreams or one that's moving me away from my big goals and dreams? And in a state of fear for most people, it's away from. We're moving away from pain faster than we move towards the pleasure of achieving our goal. So in this state of awareness, I go, wow. You know, I can, I can, I can sense this. Now we, it, we, it's imperative, John, that we do this. When you're doing these inner sides that I'm teaching you, you must do it without any blame, shame, 
guilt or justification. You have to learn how to be aware of the neurochemical and the emotional processes within you to be able to change your brain. So the first step is awareness. And then in a calm, relaxed state, you ask yourself, which is the I now, what's my intention? Is my intention to be in a state of fear or is my intention to be in a state of taking action? Is my intention to put my tail between my legs and allow this fear to control me or is my intention to move forward? And for most entrepreneurs, it's obviously move forward, take action. And then we're going to go back to the third A. So we have AYA, awareness, then intention. The third A is action. Now I'm going to go back to what I suggested earlier. You do not overwhelm the brain with massive action as some motivational speakers tell you to do. It floods the brain with more of the neurochemistry that causes people to fear and to, uh, and to freeze or run away. You set up what is one simple action I can take right now. One, not even three here, you do one. And now you take that action step. Now you have actually created a process in which you have discharged the fear response initially. You have rewired your brain. This is, I'm, I'm talking about really rewiring your brain, creating a new neural pattern. And if you do this for a day, a week, a month, three months, six months, you now rewire your brain. You reset your default mode network. You deactivate that sphere response for the same either internal or external stimuli, and now you are in control. Now you have more confidence, more certainty, more control to take actions two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, in the absence of understanding this, people are going to default to the reactive state of the brain instead of being aware of how their brain works, how their emotions work, and overriding by upgrading their knowledge and their skill so that they are in control instead of any of the disempowering subconscious patterns that they've become accustomed to for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. No blame, no shame, no guilt or justification, Fire Nation, just inner size. So John, share with us, share with Fire Nation, why we as entrepreneurs should read this book and where can we pick it up? Great. So um, I'll tell you where you can pick it up first. I'll tell you why you should read it and apply it. So uh, I've got a whole bunch of uh, free eight brain training audios for people, eight brain training audios worth about 200 bucks. Uh, when people buy the book right now, uh, on, if you go to ignitemybrain.com, ignitemybrain.com, that's where you can see the, the different gifts I'm giving people for buying you know, one or five copies of the book. Uh, they'll go to Amazon to buy the book, then come back to ignitemybrain.com, put in the little code, and I'll give them a whole bunch of gifts for, for buying the book. So why should they read the book? Well, a couple of things we didn't talk about yet is understanding that uh, within our brain, we really have two brains. Uh, one of them I call is Einstein, and Einstein is the genius part of your brain that can use imagination and deductive reasoning to figure things out and to create plans. But the other, and by the way, that's called the left prefrontal cortex, which is just above your left eye, obviously behind your skull. But right next to that, in the other frontal lobe, your right frontal lobe above your right eye, is Frankenstein. And Albert Einstein is one of my heroes, and I just loved how brilliant he was for thinking outside the proverbial box and using his imagination to solve things. But we also know that Frankenstein is there right next to Albert Einstein coming up with reasons why you can't or shouldn't or won't. So imagine you're driving your car and you have one foot on the gas, and that's Einstein, but then every time you make a little bit of headway or you want to get somewhere else, Frankenstein comes up and says, well, here's why you can't. You're not smart enough. You're not good enough. You're too young. You're too old. Last time you tried this, you got hurt. I saw something. I read something. Your sister, your brother, your mother, your father did this and they lost their shirt. So you have to learn that first and foremost, you are normal. This is just how our brain works. And hundreds of thousands of years of evolution have given us these um, neural circuits that work at lightning speeds behind your level of awareness to function and keep you alive, to keep you safe. But 
you also are motivated by pleasure and, and achieving goals. And so the book is a user's manual for how to understand how to use Einstein where Einstein is needed, how to tame and calm Frankenstein, and then how do you get the rest of your brain through inner sizing, whether it's learning new self-talk patterns, learning how to manage your stress, learning how to manage your fears, learning how to develop new empowering beliefs, learning how to let go of disempowering habits that just kill your chances for hyper growth or for regular growth, and how do you develop methodically in an organized step-by-step -step fashion a way for you to be able to achieve one goal after another, whether it's your health, whether it's relationships, career, business, or money, or whatever it is you want to achieve, there is a process by which when you use it to get your brain to be on board with you, it'll make achieving goals faster and easier than ever before, which is different than fast and easy. It's faster and easier. If you're over the age of 25, you've got a, a bunch of beliefs that may be empowering you, May, may be disempowering. You have a bunch of habits that may be empowering you, may be disempowering you. What if you could learn how to recognize which ones are serving you and empowering you and helping you achieve your goals, which ones are not, and how to let go of them because they're nothing more than a reinforced neural pattern in the brain that operates automatically. So the book is all about how to take better care of you know, your brain's processes so that you are once and for all in control and able to achieve more of your goals and dreams. Fire Nation, it's time to take control. It's time to accomplish your hopes and dreams. IgniteMyBrain.com is where you want to go to get all the awesome bonuses that John has for you. So check that out, IgniteMyBrain.com. Because Fire Nation, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And you've been hanging out with J.A. and J.L.D. today. <laughs> so keep up the heat. And John, I want to thank you, brother, for sharing your genius with Fire Nation today. For that, we salute you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you, my friend. I love your work and I'm so, so happy to be associated with you. Hey, Fire Nation, today's value bombs were dropped by John Asaraft. And if you're ready to discover your big idea in just one hour, visit yourbigidea.io. It's magical, Fire Nation, and it's there waiting for you. Yourbigidea.io. I'll catch you there or I'll catch you on the flip side. Let's get real. Let's Talk Roll by ADP, the first chat-based mobile payroll app designed for small businesses and startups. It makes running payroll as easy as sending a text. Visit getroll.com slash fire to get your first three months free. Work in sales or interested in learning how to sell? Then check out the Salesman Podcast with Will Barron. You'll learn how to find buyers and win big business in effective and ethical ways with episode topics like the four-step process to influencing buying decisions. Listen to The Salesman wherever you get your podcasts.